Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. So welcome to the next update in the ongoing First Crusade project. Now it's been a few weeks or maybe even actually a couple of months since the last one and as you guys know if you watch the channel I like to do these updates when I've done a bulk of stuff rather than when I just do a unit here or there and as I've got multiple projects on the go at once it takes me a little bit longer to sort of build up the amount that I would like to put in an update. However, I have been busy on this at the same time I was building up my Zulus. I was sort of picking and choosing things that I wanted to add to the First Crusade. Now, if you watched my previous update, you'll know that I had a desire to sort of increase the Seljuk and Saracen forces a little bit. That hasn't gone so well. I seem to have carried on building up my uh, Crusader force and also given them some allies in the form of the Byzantines. Um, however, I have also got some bits of terrain that you may have seen some photos on the channel as they've been going up. Um, but as you can see, here we are. I've put the array out. We've got some Byzantines down the front. We have some more uh, Western Knights at the back. We have some Varangian Guard and we have some Andalusian Mercenaries. I'll top of that I've got some tents to show you so what I thought I'd do is I'd get everything out so you can see it and then what we'll do is we'll go through the update and I'll just go through them unit by unit and just show you what I've worked on how I've done it and uh, what's coming up next okay so here we are so the first unit I want to take a look at are these knights that I've done now these are by Reconquer Designs who as you know if you watch the channel that I, I really really enjoy the products that he makes now these are 3d printed no I, I 3d printed these and um, I, I love them uh, basically I think they've got so much character and they really show off what I, the feeling that I was trying to get for the first crusade and that's that sort of weary worn look um, for people who have traveled a long way and to still have to fight at the end of the day now um, i believe these are actually advertised as early military orders which only came into existence shortly after the conclusion of the first crusade but the sort of thinking i had behind them and you'll know that i like to put sort of narratives into my games and into my armies is to me this just represents some knights who have been raised by a lord and he sold off all of his his lands and his estates and he's gone on crusade and he's armed eight of his his good retainers um, and taken them with him um what i've tried to do is do not not a livery in the same way that you would in say if i would for the wars of the roses and in fact if i just take this base here i decided it would be fun just to play around with some colors um, and maybe do some quartering um, and I thought what colors don't I do very often so I decided to go with this sort of pale orange and a cream color and I've just very simply just quartered that on uh, on their tabards if you can see them and I've also added this sort of a split cross on there as well which uh, you can see on the back now all of these sculpts are individual there's um, nine all together which is perfect because I base my um, cavalry regiments in nines and I've been doing that ever since I started my English Civil War project um, I just find it gives you a little bit more room to do interesting things with the bases um, some of them have cloaks on them and um, some of them obviously have uh, open open faces or helmets so you get this quite nice character here um, I've tried to sort of keep in theme with them all and uh, sort of make them dusty and dirty but these were great fun to work on the spears are wire spears which I get from North Star Games and the shields these are actually Vitrix shields because when I initially started my first crusade project project I bought quite a few of the plastic normans and i had loads of the shields and i just made them up on batch so these shields have already been made with the transfers they hadn't been weathered yet but when i ever need when i need some i just dip into the box and pick out the ones i want and you might recognize this pose here which uh, you can't tell me that's not based on um, orlando bloom's pose in kingdom of heaven when they're about to do the charge um where he's kissing the sword but i love it so uh there we are. So played around again with some different colours for horses and just tried out a couple of new things. Now, the centre base is, is my favourite, so the command. Um, you, I've tried to, I thought this guy looked like he was uh, he was in charge. Uh, perhaps this is a, uh, a Norman nobleman who's uh, felt the call to go on crusade um, and seek, well, I was about to say seek forgiveness, but um, 
obviously um, they're going to be having quite a few fights on the way. But my my favourite sculpt out of all of them is this chap here. This one who's sort of looking down. I get the idea that maybe he's going, you know, going past a villager or something who's uh, who spotted him, and uh, he's just looking as he as they trot past. But he's got all these really really nice belts and buckles on him really fun to pick out what i also like is the fact that the um you've got the, the straps on here so like with the chap in the middle his shield is slung rather than actually being held um, you might be able to just pick out his helmet behind the shield there and then the same here it's it's been held loosely rather rather than like this guy where you get with a lot of models where the shield ends up covering a lot of the body um so there we are now i've i've based them up as i say the way that i do with all my cavalry now, which is nine, well, three to a base, um, and then for a standard unit, I just do nine. As we know, I use Hail Caesar for this mostly, and Hail Caesar is just based on standard frontage. Now, I, I did something very similar with my English Civil War, sorry, I keep on bringing that up, but I, I decided to go with a slightly wedge formation. I, I think that's interesting. It also means that you get to see a bit more of, of the basing um, on the sort of the flank bases. Um, and then behind them as well, I've just tried to put, you can probably see, put the footprints, hoof prints rather, in the, uh, in the sand um, and the dirt um, just to show where they've been traveling past. These pennants are all by Little Big Men Studios. They're just the Norman um, pennants. And I decided not to go with the typical sort of red or black cross. You can you can get some just typical crusading ones. Because again, I wanted this to be the first crusade. And while they have got it on their shields and a few people have, have actually sewn the cross onto their, um, onto their cloaks, like this chap here, I kind of felt that the, the having individual pennants just gave the unit a bit more character and made it a little bit more visually appealing in the game these will be acting as heavy cavalry not not cataphract cavalry because that'll be for the byzantines um but these will be heavy cavalry and um, i'm looking forward to getting them stuck in i haven't actually used my crusaders yet if you look at all the battle reports we've paid which i think is two three two um i've actually used the seljuks but in the next game i'm going to try and convince uh, Robin that he can be the Seldricks and I'll, I'll give these guys a go um, So overall really pleased. Um, I'll leave um, photos up at the end the way I always do so you can see some more shots of these guys um, close up and in action and I'll also leave links down below to um, uh, Reconquer Designs Patreon and his website These were I think these were just these were in the Patreon at the end of last year and they are they are a fantastic set so uh, so I hope you guys like them um, we might as well move on to the next reconquer thing then actually and then I can do them all in, in one block but absolutely fantastic lovely sculpts okay so next up we have these crossbowmen now these are a little bit of an anomaly. Basically, I like these so much, I had to print them and I had to, to paint them up because I wanted them in my armies. Now, my thinking behind these is that these are actually going to be a mercenary unit. And the reason for that is these are actually Andalusian. Well, that's how he's designed them anyway, uh, Macross from Reconquer. And I, strictly speaking, I'm get, uh, the, the Seldrick forces or the Fatimid forces probably didn't have sort of, you know, large contingents of, of crossbowmen or, or guys that look this way. However, they did hire mercenaries and we know they hired mercenaries and the Crusaders hired mercenaries as well. So in my mind, this is a, a group of Andalusian mercenaries that have found themselves in the employ of the Fatimids or the Byzantines or the, or the Crusaders or whoever. Um, and they sell their services to the person with the most coin. And I just think it was a chance to do a really characterful unit. As you guys know, when it comes to historical accuracy, I do try to um, make my games and my armies as historically accurate as possible. And however, I do like to look for things where I can just take maybe small pieces of evidence and just and, and, and just go with it. Um, and I did find a line in one of the books that said that the Seldricks did enjoy to use mercenaries, and that was the excuse I, was, I needed. And I thought, brilliant, we'll use these. As you can see, we have a mix of sort of armored and sort of more heavily armored with this commander chap at the back um chaps and i just i love the poses um i tried again i've done a little bit more highlighting and shading um on the cloth here because i just found that they they just they look so cool and it, it's a chance with these to really work on um sort of how i deal with shadows and as with all my other crusaders and um well this entire project i've tried to do high contrast with very few sort of mid-tones so um, when I do prime these and I use a Xenophil 
undercoat, I just use black and then white from a very high angle. I don't do a mid-tone or like a 45 degree spray like a lot of people do. And I just like to give that impression of sort of the harsh environment or really bright sun. Um, and I've just tried to mix the colors up a little bit, just do something a bit unusual. And then I've just tried to tie the unit together by giving them all the same sort of headscarf or turban color. And I thought white would, uh, would be quite cool for that. Um, I quite like this guy reloading <laughs> at the back. And then the other base. There we are. So I've reused a couple of the sculpts. I quite like this guy here who's using the uh, the hand crank, the winch thing to, uh, to load his crossbow. And I've tried to pick out sort of the padded leather armor, the gambeson, if that's what it was called at this period. So again, these are Reconquer, these are 3D prints and I've got to say the quality is is fantastic. I'm not going to go on. I've already gone on about it. And everyone who watches this knows I like them. So, um, um, but do do go and check them out. Um, they are originally for the Reconquista because that's what the main sort of period um, he covers. But with a little bit of sort of fiddling or even conversion, you can pretty much make them fit whatever you like for that sort of you know 11th, 12th century feel. Um, anyway, so this was the sort of the two smaller so we say uh parts of the crusading project that i've completed let's move on to something a bit more spiky okay so if you watched the last update you'll probably seen i i picked up um the fire forge uh spearman for the byzantine empire and i also picked up some cavalry now, when it came to work on these, I decided that I wanted to sort of follow suit in the same way that I did with my Black Guard, if you watched the last video, and that was to try and create a large unit using only 25 figures and just do something more interesting with the formation. Now, with the Black Guard, I had them kind of forming a, a square or, or, you know, a defensive formation, and everyone was looking the other way. And I've done something similar here, but I've just tried to... to sort of just keep it a little bit more front facing if that makes sense um so these are byzantine heavy entry the scooter toy um and i plan on doing another big unit of this my plan overall is that my divisions in my first crusade force will have two or three divisions of normans uh you know the typical crusaders and then just a single division of byzantine allies um who either may or may not follow orders the way that um, you want them to um as i had the uh, the core saw box i thought it'd be fun to add a mounted um sort of commander or, or or messenger at the back i've done that quite a lot in um in my other projects particularly my napoleonics and i thought this would be a good chance to do it and it also just acts as a nice little centerpiece at the back of the unit because again it's not the number of men on the base that matters but just the ground they cover and i'm just i'm enjoying trying to find ways to make a few men look like more. Uh, the banners are from Little Big Men Studios, um, as is everything else. But on this one, I decided that I wanted to go with the kite shields. Now, a lot of people use the oval shields, but as I'm going for the later period, uh, well, it's not really the late Byzantine Empire, it's just that a lot of, a lot of the Byzantine Empire projects that I see are set earlier and I thought the kite shields just sort of made them sort of fit in with the project a little bit more and the look of everything simply because that's what the Normans have. So I picked up uh, the transfers from Battle Flag and I picked up two sets, the cross that you can see before me and then um, this one here which I will be using um, on the next unit although I'm very tempted to make this unit a bit bigger um, and maybe buy another pack and maybe do a smaller unit with these and then just add some more of the uh, the red ones in um, these were pretty straightforward to paint to be honest um, a bit like the black garden with, with fireforge i tend to find you you basically you get d decent quality simple miniatures and i don't mean that in an insulting way if you're building up armies and you're building up large regiments then you don't necessarily want really really detailed miniatures like the reconquer ones um, which make far more fun characterful units or individuals so these guys as you can see they've got their nice um, sort of scale armor 
and then all I've done is um, I've picked out either in red or in purple, which struck me as fairly opulent colours. I've got this kind of idea in my head that the Byzantine Empire is really opulent, um, and like all empires, of course, you know it's <laughs> it's got its its wealth, but it's also got its um, its poor parts as well. But for some reason, that just struck me as you know these guys are the successors essentially to to the Roman Empire, and I like I just wanted lots of purple and red. So there we go. Um, I tried to keep it keep it simple, and um, there we are. The flagpole is wire. I, I built that up so I could I could mount that flag, and then I just tried to put enough weathering on the um, on the shields to uh, to make them sort of you know a little bit different. I have to say though that put the I, I thought putting on these because I, I haven't used normal shield transfers water slides for quite a long time I, I do use the little big men ones quite a lot um, and I set aside I don't know maybe half an hour and I thought that would be fine two and a half hours later of, um, of doing doing decals onto uh, onto shields was was more than enough and um, that, that was the end of my evening but uh, overall I'm really really pleased with these you know they are I think they're going to look cool on the tabletop um, and um, they will be taking part in quite a few battles and of course I can then play some smaller battles where these are actually fighting either the Seljuks on their own or the Normans on their own, the Crusaders. Uh, here's the core sword, now the shield, um, the shield is from um, the plastic set but the shield transfer itself uh, is a little big men studios one I found that fitted it but the shield boss is actually one that I sliced off a uh, another miniature from and I can't even remember what range it was from I think it might have been a um, what the hell was it I think it might have been a hundred years war miniature but I fitted it on and there we go I think that looks pretty cool um, and then the the horse armor I've just tried to make things look a little bit more visually interesting than um, I do normally for um, for that kind of horse armor I'm, before I'd have probably just all painted it one color but there we go, so there is my first unit of Byzantines. However, having done these, I decided, well, basically, I wanted to do some Varangian Guard. And in fact, I'll tell you what, I'll just, I'll just get those out. Okay, so here are the Fireforge Varangian Guard. Now, I decided to go with Fireforge because they have this pack here that has 12 models in it. Now... I, I, I looked at lots and lots of different providers. Some of the armor to me seemed too early. Some of it seemed far too late. V and V miniatures made um, look made some really nice looking um, Varangian guard, but they only seemed to have four sculpts. And I wanted to do a, a unit with, you know, a fair few on it, and then have some spares for some other bits. So um, this seemed like the logical choice. Um, now. My experience of working with these is absolutely the polar opposite of the experience I had with working with the Fireforge Plastics for the Black Guard and the um, the Byzantine Heavy Infantry, the Scooter Toy. I can honestly say that the assembly and modelling aspect of working with these miniatures um, I didn't enjoy. In fact, it was hell. Um, I'm, I'm I'm very happy to you know give credit where credit's due when people do you know really good job with modeling and sculpting and that but, but this this was horrible um, in fact it, it was so bad that um, I could only s s stomach sticking one or two models together at a time before I get frustrated and I have to go and do something else so it took me about two weeks just to stick these ones together however let me just say that the painting of these miniatures was great fun. It was it was it was almost the opposite again. So the painting was great fun. They took the paint really well. The the, the de details look good. The armor is excellent. I just didn't enjoy the assembly. And there's two reasons for that. Now these are resin uh, miniatures. These are these are cast resin. These aren't um, 3D prints. Um, and my first problem was that there is a right. I'm not. In, I don't need instructions for everything. But I would if you've got this many pieces, I'd expect at least some kind of sort of nod to how they're going to go together. The other problem is that, now I don't know if I just got a duff pack, I did send some emails but I never got any replies. Now if you look at look on here, you can see, now to me that looks photoshopped, but basically you can see some one handed poses. Um, and none of these axes have a single hand on, in fact every single one is has got two hands sculpted onto it. Um, let me just get one out, look here they are on the sprue. Now, there we go, see? There's two hands sculpted on. So what I had to do 
was I actually, well, for the one who's carrying it sort of over his shoulder, I just very simply snipped it here. So he's got a slightly stubbier axe. Um, but for the other one over here, I wanted to, you know, be, be sort of holding that and have, have it behind him and have that length of that, um, that axe. I sat there, heated up my, um, my blade on my knife and just trimmed that down all the while trying really hard not to snap the resin. Now, I don't know if I was missing pieces or if this was meant to have some other parts in it, but if they were, if they did, they weren't in here and my emails didn't, didn't get answered. So, um, so yeah. Um, they they they've got a lot of um they've got a lot of options for for the arms but no indication of which arm goes with which part to get the pose you want so there's a lot of trial and error in the end i just ended up snipping them one at a time with the arms that were directly next to them assuming that that was the ones they were supposed to be um i decided again i went with victory shields uh, because the i had a lot of those lying around now onto the fun part so I, I loved painting these. It, this was the exact the exact opposite. I, I got to play around with a lot of colours, um, and I took um, a lot of inspiration from the uh, Manor Arms book, the Osprey book on the Varangian Guard, which I'll, I'll show you guys in a second. Now, at this period, the Varangian Guard was heavily um, manned by ex-Saxon uh, Anglo-Saxon. Well, I say they're not ex-Anglo-Saxons, but they're Anglo-Saxon exiles from. England, um, who, who who went to the Byzantine Empire after the Norman Conquest, and uh, essentially gave their service to Alexios, the uh, the emperor. And they even had their own little um, uh, uh, sort of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Colony um, in the Byzantine Empire, um, and. I decided to sort of just to honor that fact and just show it I've used I've used Saxon shields for these with Saxon shield designs um, and I thought that was just a nice little throw throwback I've also tried to sort of make them sort of in the choice of sort of the colors that I've used a little bit more in my mind Saxony so I've used sort of earthy tones so some kept in some greens and some reds and some sort of uh, beige shades in there um, there's some fantastic sources out there um, about the Varangian Guard. Now, my idea is I only wanted a small unit. Um, if you read historically about these guys, they're like this elite crack unit. Um, now, a lot of that's probably going to be propaganda. Um, however, um, I, they will have a few special rules, but I didn't want to do a big unit of them. I just wanted a small unit that had maybe been assigned to protect the uh, the general, the Strategos, um, who's in charge of this small division, and they've been sent to accompany him to make sure he doesn't get himself into too much bother or any bother that he can't get himself out of. Um, I still have three of these left and they're going to go on the command base with the Strategos. Um, I'll, I'll show you him in a minute. Um, and they they were great fun to paint and I've just tried to mix things up with the colours and overall I'm, I'm really pleased but as I say the, the modelling experience yeah not not so great um, but what I'll do I'll just show you sort of where I am and the inspiration um, that I used for painting these guys up a lot of you will recognize these uh, these blue books, the Osprey Men at Arm books. So I picked up the Varangian Guard book. I also just picked up the Byzantine armies. I'm not planning on doing a massive amount of Byzantine stuff, so I'm not going to go too deep. Although I have to say the, the history in these is absolutely fascinating and it does make me want to do more. Now, the, um, uh, the art in this one um, is very very distinctive and I, that's the kind of the feeling that i wanted wanted to get with these guys is something completely different from what i've done before um and really sort of show off these these sort of crazy um bodyguards for the emperor um now there is a uh, an aside to this there is a little tale now dom put me onto this and i did find um the source for it and now i can't find it again but essentially when the uh, when the normans when the crusade arrived in constantinople the um the emperor billeted the crusaders these normans near to the varangian barracks but as the varangian guard at that point was mostly made up of anglo-saxons they weren't very happy to see all these Normans suddenly turn up <laughs> next to them. And they had to be kept apart because the Varangian Guard just wanted to kill them. They just wanted to hack them to pieces. Fairly understandably. Also, the Normans weren't particularly pleased to see them. 
So I think that could really lead to some interesting dynamics in game, be that if Hail Caesar or Deus Vault or, or whatever system you're using. Um, so these guys, for example, won't take orders from a Norman commander. So if you're looking at the new Hail Caesar rules, there's the ability for the commander to uh, rally units from other divisions. I think that we'll just, for a Norman commander, he just won't be able to do that for the Byzantines. He, they, these guys just will not take orders from them. Um, and on the same sort of side of that the byzantines won't you know the interaction between them um will will be sort of fairly stunted and i really want to get that that idea of you know the all these different um troop types you know the crusade is made up of lots of different people from lots of different countries lots of different troop types lots of different languages and i want that to um not not cripple the game i don't want there to be sort of huge command issues but i do want that reflected and then that will be quite interesting to play then against the seljuks who will have mercenaries and they are are also made up um, of you know a large empire however I have the feeling from my readings that it's more cohesive it you know obviously we had a lot longer uh, to train and the crusade was you know put together in a, in two to three years and then then they were off um, but that's sort of where I want to uh, go with these um, here's the strategos uh, he's also a, a resin model though he looks like he's gonna be a lot more straightforward to put together so I will be using the foot version on on a base with three more of these these chaps here and then i think for the, um, i might even pop this one in my course or uh, regiment um leading them on a on a charge so uh, i think that'll be a lot of fun um i plan on getting some archers for these guys at some point but at the moment i think this little this little sort of band will be enough for me to um do some interesting things in game now the final thing uh, I want to show you is this scenery. Now here we are again, these are 3D prints and I got these files when I backed the seed Kickstarter um, back, I think it was this time last year, uh, which allowed you to build um, essentially a, uh, a Christian castle and a, um, a Saracen uh, stronghold and I will be printing those at some point. Um, however, it came with loads of stretch goals and included this palisaded camp. And I thought this would be great fun to have in scenarios or even just on the board because given how far the Crusaders are traveling, you know, they would have set up camp and sometimes they were in places for months before they moved on. On top of that, you could have some Byzantine outposts. We know that they had those and they were garrisoned, so maybe you can have some Byzantines in here and the Crusaders are trying to relieve them or the Muslims have captured it and, you know, they're trying to, you know, scrap to get out of it. But essentially, these are one piece. So, uh, and then um, I've just kind of stuck them, <laughs> just stuck them onto, I've got lots of Perry bases from all my Walls of the Roses projects. I've got a lot of Perry bases, so I've just stuck them on. Um, they've all been painted with contrast paint wildwood and then I've just done the tops and then added some basic dry brushing on them and um, And that's it. I haven't bothered to pick out the nails or anything I thought the dry brushing would pick that up and then I've just based them and essentially we can just stick them together like this To create quite some, quite a nice little palisade. There's a couple of corner sections I'm gonna basically gonna pr um, print what you can see again and be able to create a corner of a, a fort um, here is a watchtower and it's pretty much good for any period, really. You know, fantasy, medieval, probably even into some of the later periods as well. Lots of uses. Um, and it also came with some tents. So um, there we are. Just some very basic tents. Just to chuck in there. This one has some apples and some grain. But just to add a bit of flavor to the tabletop, really. Um, and that's really what I'm looking for now. I've I've got a few more things I want to want to paint up for this. Um, I've got uh, certainly some more scenery to do. Um, but coming up next, the next thing for the Crusade project, I'm going to be working on a, a command base. I'm using one of the uh, Reconquer Design miniatures. Um, well, I'm actually using a couple of miniatures, and um, I'm going to be doing a a tutorial. Well, not necessarily a tutorial, but a, basically a a paint along or a model along as I sort of design the base and build it up a little bit, how like I did with the Warwick one. It's but instead of sort of showing you sort of what stage after stage I'll be doing it like I do when I do a, a how to paint video I thought that would be some fun and um, once um, we're, we're all set to go we will be having some more battle reports um, for the crusade and probably starting a little campaign as well I still have some gripping beast plastics to work through through just to back up my Saracen forces archers and spearmen 
but after I've done those, I think I'm going to have enough to uh, to say I've got a chunky force and we'll be having some uh, some fairly big games. So uh, keep your eyes peeled and watch out for those. Anyway, guys, thank you for staying with me and uh, and sitting through this. I hope you guys found it interesting. If you've got any questions about the miniatures or, or any of the stuff here, just pop them down below. Of course, I'll leave more photos up at the end, so stick around to have a look at those. What do you guys think? Is what do you think I should maybe go a bit heavier on the Byzantines, or uh, or should I sort of, you know, maybe just do what my initial gut feeling is and just have a few units, just just to sort of represent them there. I still, you know, have only got a well, I say a six by four or seven by five, so um, I don't want to paint myself out of room to be able to do any maneuvering anyway i hope you're all keeping well and uh yeah i will see you guys in the next one stay safe i'll see you all soon bye bye